Hey, what's up guys? Michael Tobin here, and welcome to the start of a new series. So this series tentatively titled as of now, How to Create Videos Like, insert whoever, is something I've been wanting to start for a while, and basically this is going to be taking a deep dive into how a specific creator kind of sets up their lighting, their audio, their cameras, angles, what b-roll looks like, their editing styles, and one, it's kind of a challenge for me to kind of get out of my comfort zone, which is usually very dark and grungy looking and heavily stylized, to try some different things so I can learn along the way, as well as giving you guys the tools to emulate and be inspired by some of your favorite creators as well. So I thought what better way to start off this series with the king of crispy himself, MKBHD, basically the ruler of the tech and innovation uh, space here on YouTube. He's constantly creating consistent and extremely high quality content that's both engaging and interesting to watch just as well as it's visually beautiful, the audio is always fantastic, and he's constantly pushing the limits of what we consider a YouTube filmmaker to be capable of. Now I should say right now that while I am doing research for these videos, watching the content creators, even asking them generalized questions to try to gain some insight, um, but for now, a lot of this is basically using the evidence that I see from their videos and my years of expertise you know, filmmaking to kind of take a very logical guess onto how to achieve that look or that style for specific shots. So if any of the creators that I do videos on watch these videos, definitely let me know down in the comments below how accurate I was and feel free to correct or critique. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about cameras here. Of course, Marquez uses red cameras. He's been a fan of those for years and oftentimes the first to get his hands on new red products. Heck, I bet right now he's testing the Komodo 6K for the past three weeks, right? But currently he's using, I still believe, the 8K Monstro sensor, the latest red highest end sensor of their camera lineup. And again, currently there's no budget for this series, so I'm not renting or filming on that. I'm currently on my Blackmagic Pocket 6K. I believe I've heard him say it in plenty of interviews in the past that when he is reviewing a product or filming something, he doesn't want to essentially lie to his audience about how that product looks in real life. And so he wants it to be as sharp as possible and as true to real life as possible. Now in terms of focal length, I did reach out to him on Twitter asking him what focal length he relatively uses to filming a roll, this sequence right here. Uh, and he did actually respond. He simply said 24 to 35. So right now I have set my uh, lens to 24 millimeters as it kind of looks like most of his A-roll is on the wider side so it has a little bit of that distortion. Now I don't exactly know which lens he uses for these shots. I know he used to use I believe the Canon 24 to 70 um, but I'm not sure if he's using a Sigma Cine now or moved on to something else. Now for his A-roll pretty much every time I've noticed that his camera is eye level with him. So right now that's what I have my tripod set to and what a lot of people don't know is camera angles actually convey a lot of subconscious feelings to us. For example in films that's why if a camera is shooting really low up then the filmmaker is basically insinuating that that person is of importance or a higher power or is basically looking down upon you. Whereas the opposite, if you're filming someone from a very high level shooting down, then you're insinuating that that person is very small, almost kind of this like God look type thing. But if you have something that's eye level, that's going to be a lot more like, hey, let's just have a conversation. I'm just talking to you as an equal fellow person. Now when it comes to B-roll, his camera movements are actually very simple most of the time. Everything pretty much looks like a slider or tripod movement. He's not doing any sort of like handheld crazy moves or like stabilizer stuff. For the most part, everything is very smooth and parallaxed and relatively simple. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, have you seen his robot? Now, of course, he has one of those awesome Bolt, basically camera robots that is just insane and can do some insane movements. I've also seen that he's paired it pretty much with uh, a different RED camera and the Laowa 24mm probe lens. 
So every once in a while, we are lucky enough to get a awesome intro shot or something with this camera, just doing some insane move that you just are mind blown that it's even possible to get that with a non CGI shot of whatever product it is. But also what's great about it is the fact that if honestly myself or anyone else had that product, they'd probably be using that robot for like every single B-roll shot, trying to always outdo themselves. And what's honestly going to happen is the audience is going to get very tired of those shots. The fact that most of the time his shots are very simple and basic, but again, still look beautiful, but basic movements. When he does one of those really crazy shots in the beginning or wherever, it makes it that much more special and it's always going to keep you engaged. Now moving on to audio, I know he has used the same shotgun mic for quite some time. I believe it's the Sennheiser, I forget the exact model number. I'll leave it linked down in the description below. But of course, it's a fantastic shotgun mic. I'm currently using my Rode NTG4 Plus. Now what is not necessarily unique, I have seen it before, but a little different than a lot of people is the fact that he has the boom mic right below him shooting up. So it is just out of frame. So if if I follow my finger here, the tip of the microphone is right, boop, touching it. And so that's hopefully going to give some very clean audio. Now, normally I record um, with the boom right above. Now, depending on where you're filming, this may have to change or not because with a shotgun mic, whatever you're aiming at. So let's say there was a giant AC or fan above me that was just making a lot of noise. I probably am not going to put it down low aiming up because it's going to pick up my voice, but it's also going to pick up that. So if you have a lot of noise up above, that's where you'd want to kind of put it over top of your head and aim straight down. That way it's going right to the floor and just getting your voice as it goes past that. Moving on to lighting. This is something that honestly is going to vary in a lot of his videos because he does change sets quite a bit. And sometimes he does use practicals in the backgrounds and I'm sure different lighting setups. My best educated guess from behind the scenes footage that I've seen and just by watching his videos is again for the A-roll shots here. I know his current studio has basically a whole wall of windows and sunlight and obviously he has color temperature control tubes or, or whatever bulbs he put in when he first moved into the studio. So those are all color balanced. And then for his key light, he's basically using, I believe still an aperture, either 120D or 300D. And it's to his front right. Basically you zoom in super hardcore onto um, most of his shots for his A-roll. You'll see the little white light um, basically the little eye light at that angle and it's basically just creating a nice fill and creating some contrast on his left side. So depending on the location that he's in, if this side gets too dark, he may be bringing in a bounce right here or if he wants more of a contrast, he could flag it. I'll show you. So right here I have two simple uh, foam board things and basically white or silver use as a balance black use as a flag right now this is natural to my left side is basically a window but if i bring this in especially close i know it's in frame but you get the effect now my face is extremely even i've basically filled this side of my face but if i bring in the black one then you can see how much more contrast is on this side of face this is called negative fill and this is basically removing light from one side so basically you would just have this off and you can see the difference here so there's with the negative fill that's nothing and this is with the bounce now real quick on the editing side again most of the time everything is very simple and clean I'm guessing by now he has a pretty standard LUT that he uses that he's created. No crazy stylized color grading here. Everything is true to life to make sure the products look the way that they do in real life. He does edit specifically in Final Cut Pro and for a lot of it uses motion VFX graphics which are pretty much the greatest plugins ever created and specifically made for Final Cut X. They do have some Premiere ones as well but primarily for Final Cut He'll use that on his B-roll clips or to show off latest tech specs, things like that. But yeah, that is taking a deep dive into how to create a video just like MKBHD. Let me know what you guys think about this new series and let me know who you think I should do next. 
I'm thinking maybe Peter McKinnon for the next one, but let me know down in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed and this is the first video you're watching, make sure you hit that button. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.